Hey everybody, Kay here on the homestead in Tennessee, and I just want to talk to you about long-term water storage today. Now I know a lot of Prepper channels have probably covered this extensively, but I just want to tell you what I'm doing and one big mistake not to make. Now first of all, with long-term water storage, you have to decide how many people you're storing water for. You know, you need at least one gallon a day per person. And you may not have a lot of room for water storage, but if you do have room, like me, I decided to get an IBC tote. Now these big totes, they're called IBC totes, if you buy it new, it's going to cost four to five times what you can buy it for online through Facebook Marketplace or LSN network, LSN.com. And you know, they sell for around, this is 275 gallons, so they sell anywhere between 70 to a hundred dollars. And if they're cleaned, if they clean them, they charge extra. The IBC totes are moving around this country all the time. They're moving H2O2, they're moving liquid glue, water-based glue, and chemicals. And so you have to be sure if you're going to go this route to get a food grade IBC tote. I bought a tote that was cleaned previously but when I opened the top you know it just had this real plastic smell that came out and I don't know if it's the plastic I don't know if glue was in this the valve is tight and the cap on the valve is sticky so what I want to do is, I thought I was going to have help today and I would have done this differently. We would have moved it around and just let the water go out down the hill, but I cannot move this by myself. I was able to lift up the corners and chalk it up so that I can get a water level above the valve because the valve doesn't sit right on the bottom of the bottle. This is actually called a bottle. <laughs> this is the cage and this is the bottle. And you want to tilt it up so that you can get everything out. So what I want to do, what I am doing, <laughs> I have been wrangling hoses for an hour because apparently it's about 125 feet from my nearest city water faucet on the outside of my house. I have a one faucet that's tied to city water and then two spigots faucets on the front of the house that are tied to my cistern water which is rainwater. And so what I want to keep in here is city water which I will have to treat from time to time. But just to have that backup water supply just imagine I can wash dishes, flush toilets, and, and, and more. I'll have to bucket the water over to the house, which won't be easy, but after reading that, that recent article, how I survived the Bosnian War, you know, a year, and what they, they had to collect rainwater. That's the only way they had water, is they used rainwater and they boiled it. If, if they could get fuel. I mean, it was, it was dire circumstances there. So I don't want dire circumstances and I want to be prepared. And so I got a IBC tote. I picked this up from a man that I bought on Facebook Marketplace. And it seemed very clean, but I just want to put a little, about this much water in the bottom and put some bleach in there and just I wish I could swish it around, it's too heavy for that, but I'm going to put that in there and let that drain out and put fresh water in and let that drain out and do that several times today. And I'm also going to clean the, the, the uh, where the cap goes, I'm going to clean that with, where did I put it, it's in my pocket, with my lemon essential oil. <laughs> because I was trying to find my Gooby Gone, which I had a bottle of Gooby Gone in, with me. I think I brought it from California. I mean, I've had that bottle forever. Maybe I didn't bring it, I don't know. I couldn't find it. This essential oil is so powerful, it will take off sticky. 
and I love that. So I just wanted to talk about this. This is a great option if you've got you know a family and you you need more than what you can just store in a 55 gallon barrel. I will share in a link below this great website that goes over all the options from a five gallon handheld to 55 gallon drums to big rainwater reservoirs and what they do is they review all of these products from different companies and if you decide to purchase something that you see on their website then they get a small commission so it's a great win-win situation to learn about various options and companies and products so I'll be happy to share that below now also you know if you've been following me you know I have a 35 gallon tank let's go over to the other side of the shop and I'll show you I am desperate to get this all organized I'm really looking forward to the gardening being done for the season and me being able to focus on getting organized I feel so disorganized and you just don't function as well when you're disorganized this is my 35 gallon water tank you heard me talk about putting this on the back of my four-wheeler I was using this to do some remote watering back earlier in the spring when I had my cistern offline I had it drained and, and a man was repairing it unfortunately it's leaking again and I'm gonna cover all of what I'm gonna do about my cistern in another video but a number of people and I do listen to your comments a number of people wrote and said that just wasn't safe to have that big heavy sloshing tank on the back of the four-wheeler um, they recommended you know to pull it in a trailer and that just seemed even more difficult <laughs> so I've retired this at the moment and it's inside my shop but this is a great tank to have if you're one person and you have a garage you could have a tank like this they come in a number of different size, sizes at tractor supply and I'm sure other places you have to consider 35 gallons times 8 pounds that's 240 250 pounds something like that so you're not going to be just you know moving it all you got to decide where you want it okay and it has to be up off the ground because you need to be able to get a if I can pick it up you need to be able to get that spigot so you can't set it you know four inches off the ground and you can't set it on the concrete you're not supposed to uh, set these tanks on concrete it needs to be level and you need to have it set so that you don't have to so that you have access to it you, know, you can get to it you can get a bucket under it you know easy to get to and easy to use I mean that's what you want to do especially if the power goes down and the, and the water gets shut off you you want to be able to quickly access your water so highly recommended but the big thing to remember with long-term water storage is you cannot leave a tank outside that's white or clear or anything it has to be a dark color and because of the algae that grows in the tank and it becomes much more difficult to treat it and and take care of it um, so you can get tanks that are that come in darker colors um, but you just have to think about that there all these clear or white ones um, will grow algae and you can't leave those sitting on your back porch where the sun hits it okay so in that website you'll see a number of blue tanks that are like 50 gallons and less and those look really awesome for um, when you have a smaller space and you could even put that on you know your back porch or something and that would be uh, very convenient so think about that uh, you do want to try to keep your water you know tested I bought a water test kit so I'll be testing that water we'll be talking about that as time goes on but I'm starting out with city water which has already got a lot of our city water has a lot of chlorine in it so starting out with that so I shouldn't have to worry about it for a while and hopefully I won't have to worry about it at all hopefully just all of these problems that we have going on in our country will just 
quickly resolve and we life will will be good <laughs> so but if not then we want to be prepared so let me show you what I did what you could easily do like I did which is a a big pain so let's go into the garage okay so I came into the garage I opened the garage door so you could have some light in here and the roller felt off of the garage door which begs the question okay I was able to get the door service he was just they were just here like a month ago I think this door has been open maybe once or twice since they serviced it <laughs> so uh, luckily I got him and he's in town and he's coming out but um, this sort of begs the question is what do you do and someone asked actually asked me this on a comment and I thought hmm if you can't, if the electricity, if the power goes out, how do you get your garage doors open? Now in California, because there was an old motor that stopped working, we just put a handle on the wooden door. And I'm telling you, a wooden garage door, double, is heavy. But, you know, I was younger and, and it was fine. And you could always get the door open manually. So this is just, I mean, I have had these doors fixed probably four times. And so this is a real concern. Okay, back to water. Let's go over here. You know, everybody says you should have a few gallons of distilled water. And I thought, okay, I'm just gonna grab, you know, every time I go shopping, just grab a gallon or a two gallon bottle. And I had this entire shelf with gallon and one two gallon bottle. Okay, so this is some kind of, you know, compressed, fabricated, um, reconstituted wood panel that goes into the shelving unit. Now the shelving, that's what's funny about products is you'll have something really strong like the metal shelf. The metal will last for a very long time. But look at this board. This is not even a year old. This is this is garbage. So <laughs> this is moldy and I probably shouldn't even be breathing that close to it. And of course it's concave because I had all these bottles here and guess what? Gallon bottles don't necessarily, I mean they they can leak. I didn't know that. This leaks you know, not a lot, but it has leaked about, you know, a half a cup, so it drips. And I don't know, this is great value, this is the Walmart brand. I don't know if it, it's, there, if there's a seam and it leaks from the seam, I just don't know. It's never been opened. So, it leaks. You see, all of these are kind of concave, they're sunken in. I guess that's a sign that it's gonna happen, I don't know. So. It's heavy. So um, these, which are a different kind of, obviously a different kind of plastic, they haven't leaked. This is Kroger brand. And this hasn't leaked either. And this is alkalized, al alkalized water from Sprouts. And all of these are supposedly that BPA free that bad plastic that you're not supposed to consume. They used to make all kinds of drink bottles and everything, but now you, you see, most of the time you'll see BPA free on it. So you don't want to be consuming that. And look at this one, completely empty. <laughs> so that was uh, Deer Park water, natural spring water. So that one uh, completely leaked. And um, I, I had water here. Unfortunately, I had my toolkit open underneath it because I hadn't put it back away. And it leaked all in the sections of the toolkit. So all that has to be cleaned and oiled and all of that. So be very careful when you're storing your water. If you have to store water that's in a, a plastic bottle like this, again, you don't want to store it in the sunlight. 
um, make sure it's sitting in a tray, a plastic tray or you know some kind of vessel that in case it does see, it leaks out. Now obviously if you can get glass bottles, five gallon glass bottles, you know that would be ideal. Again though, they have to, you can't sit them out in the sun because the same thing will happen with glass that happens with plastic. The algae will grow. So I hope that's helpful. Now what we need to do is get over there, get the bleach and the water in the tank and um, let that sit for a little while and then drain it out and wash it out and, and do all that. Wow, it was right at the lip. Yeah. It smells kind of, not horrible, but it just smells kind of plasticky. And that could just be because the tanks themselves have been sitting out in the sun. Okay, I'm just putting a little bit of bleach in there. Of course, the city water has a lot of chlorine in it. And this is just chlorine bleach. It smells like a swimming pool now. <laughs> of course, then the whole operation of dragging these five gallon buckets around to get the water down the hill will be challenging. <laughs> I'm gonna get one of those casters for the under the plants to roll this bucket back and forth. Obviously, if you can put this in your garage close to your house, it's a lot more convenient. And of course, there's the whole question of will it freeze out here? I have been told you can have just a small candle or something underneath just that will keep, keep it from freezing. So I'll be investigating that and I'll be sharing that with you. I have to go harvest. I should have done this before I started, but I had to wrangle hoses for an hour trying to get the right, the long, the length, and the right, oh, forget it, <laughs> it's a pain. And now I see a big dark cloud forming, so I've gotta go harvest. Okay, so what I've done is clean it out with the, uh, I dumped five gallons at a time of the chlorinated water and it smells, the smell that was in there is gone and it smells much cleaner and I am starting, I'm going to start refilling it except I'm going to just flush through five gallons, turn this off, dump that and then start filling it up. Perfect size. Okay, just a footnote. My garage door guy came and he fixed the door. No charge. That was awesome. Just wanted to also point out that I just ate my first cantaloupe. Now I had harvested it a few days ago and it got pushed in the back with all this produce that I've stuffed in there. Forgot about it. I was so thirsty, it's been so hot, I went in and I ate the entire thing. 
and even though it had been in there for a few days, it was still delicious and I'm saving the seeds. Final note, even though the chlorine will break down, you know, it dissipates, it breaks down after it sits for a few days, a day or two or more in a container, you're still probably going to want to filter, put through your water filter, any water that you're actually drinking you know, from long-term storage. You're going to want to run that through your your Alexa Pure, your Berkey, whatever brand you have. So make sure to stock up on those water filters for your drinking water. But you could drink this if you had to. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, scroll down and click all so you won't miss anything right here on the homestead. I'm Kay and I'll see you in the next video.